welcome to the introduction video here to Maya. I'm just gonna make a quick. Well, it's gonna try. I'm gonna try to be quick, but um, as you can see, Maya can be pretty confusing. I'm um, using Maya 2019 here. I'm just gonna show you the basics just to get you started. Assuming that you have no idea about anything about Maya, or maybe you are a little nervous about trying it. Uh, maybe it's your first 3D software. I don't know. I've been using it for the past two years, over two years, while I'm in uh, game development classes in college. I'm about to graduate, so I figured why not make a video and just show some basic stuff that I wish I knew right away that would have helped me, but you know, all things come in time, of course. So when you first load up Maya, you're gonna be greeted with a screen similar to this. This is called your workspace. If you notice in the top right here, I'm using the Maya Classic workspace. Personally, this is just what I use, but there's def uh, different workspaces that you can mess with depending on how much you're doing or what you're doing. I'm not gonna go into all of these because like I said, that would we could spend hours on this tutorial, probably a solid week on Maya and what it does because it does so much. But I'm just gonna f focus on the basics of modeling um, just quick tips to get you started. But anyway, I'm going to go back to Maya Classic because that's my personal favorite. Close that out. This is the outliner. So if you um, go up here to one of the shelves here, they'll have some sort of preset shelves for you that have tools. If you're going to be interested in modeling, well, you're going to just you can go to the poly model modeling or you can create your own shelf. As you can see here, I have my custom shelf, my name up there. In order to create your own custom shelf, you're just gonna go up to the Windows, Setting Preferences, Shelf Editor, and if you'd like to add a shelf, you can see that there's a plus sign here. It'll give you a default name for your shelf, but you know you can name it whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna name it Tutorial, and then you just come here and click Save Shelves, and you'll notice you'll have your own shelf, and you can add your own tools here by going up to any one of these that contain the tools. There's a bunch of menus up here. You'll notice that Maya has a ton of menus. It also has a ton of ways of doing things, um, doing the same things. But anyways, um, let's go up to Mesh. Some of the tools that I generally use are, you know, Bevel. In order to add a tool here to your shelf, you're gonna wanna hold down Control, Shift, and then left click. So you'll notice uh, as I'm doing it, tools are being added to my shelf um, let's see append to polygon why not create multi-cut edge loop target weld these are just things that you can um, that way when you're modeling um, let's go up to create and you'll find some primitives here some polygon primitives that you can start out with generally I start out with a cube um, but you can always you know start out with whatever you'd like here that they have and it's just like the tools here, you're gonna hold Control Shift and left click and you'll add them to your shelf here. So now, when you first load up Maya, you won't have to go into Create, Polygon Print, you know, you can just go in here, click Cube and you have a cube. So now that we have a cube, let's observe where it started out, okay? It usually starts out in the middle here and you'll notice just like in any other 3D software or most 3D softwares, you have three axes here. You have the Y axis, it's generally, uh, oh, let me go back this uh, yellow arrow here and then you have the Z axis the blue and then you have X represented by the red there if you click your object by left clicking on it it'll highlight and you can use these arrows to translate it or move it in other words up down you can even grab onto the little box here in the middle and move it on all three axes versus where it's just moving on the one there one there if you notice in the outliner it's named, um, you can double left click that and change it to, you know, whatever name you'd like to name your mesh. Um, one thing I will say is before you get started, before you do any of this stuff, is to go up here, go into Windows, Settings, settings and Preferences, click Preferences, and you'll notice you have a bunch of settings here that you can mess around with, but go into Undo and the default will be on finite or finite it'll be 50. you want to go into infinite basically what this does is it gives you an infinite amount of undos so let's say i moved my box up here and i'm like you know what I actually don't want it there instead of moving it back and trying to guess the exact position that it was just at 
I can just hit Control and Z, and it will undo my last move there. So that is very useful. Another thing that you should do, especially if you're working on a project that you truly care about, is to come up here and click Increment and Save. It'll ask you to save, um, you know, which which folder you'd like to save it on. So let's go ahead and click a new folder here, create a new one, Tutorial, and I'll just say My Box. Yeah, the file is being saved. Yeah, student, whatever. Um, like I said, I'm a student, so I've been using Maya the student version anyway. So now Maya will automatically save, incrementally save my project. But if I want to save a specific point, always save before you close. Always save after, you know, set a timer for yourself every 10 minutes. Save every five minutes, whatever is convenient for you. I save like all the time. It becomes kind of a habit. That you do subconsciously but to save pretty fast you just hit control and s and it'll ask you if you want to save it and just click yes and you'll see down here it'll say result and it'll say that you saved it at whatever folder that you saved it at so now that we have a mesh let's talk about some things that we can do to this mesh so if we hold down the right mouse button we can click we can drag over here and highlight the edge let go and you'll now be in edge mode so you'll be able to select different edges on your mesh so if I wanted to click that one and then raise it up I could if I wanted to you know click that one I could do that control Z to undo all that hold down right click again click the vertex um, I can highlight all these vertexes and you know mess around with these I can highlight just one if I wanted to select all of them I would hold down shift and double left click these and it would select all of them. Well, I didn't select all of them there. There we go. And now I can move that around that way. And the same thing with edge. I can select, um, well, okay, no, it's not gonna work this time. Got it. That's another, uh, you'll be able to select, if there's edge loops on your mesh, you will be able to. So let me show you what I mean here. So I just inserted an edge loop. So now my mesh has, I just split the faces in half. So a face is here same thing hold down right mouse button highlight the face let go and now I can go into face mode and mess around with these faces but what I was talking about with the edge loops here is or the edges you can select or well, default selected the whole edge but say I just wanted that one I'm like you know what I actually want to select all of them around I can just shift double right click or left click excuse me and now I can control this whole edge loop and see where I want to place it another thing that you can do is um, go into object mode. So say you're in ed, you know, vertex mode and you're like, oh, I, don't, I, I, I wanna move my whole mesh, but not the vertexes. You just go over here to object mode and you're back into the default mode and you can mess around there. If you don't like the outliner, you can actually click this icon here and it will get rid of that if you like a bigger viewport. Same thing with these um, windows over here. You can click that and they'll disappear. And speaking of these, this is the channel box editor. It will show you the values on the axes that you have, the scale, the rotate, and that brings me to the tools here. If you, W is the hotkey to activate the translate tool. E is the hotkey to activate the rotate tool. And R is the hotkey to activate the scale tool. Um, duh, if you press the space bar on the viewport here, this viewport where the, this is a grid and this is a view, this is one of your camera views, it's called the perspective view. If you click the space bar, you'll notice that you have three other views here. You have the front the, on the Z axis, the top, the Y axis, and then you have the side on the X axis. If I hover over one of these views and click the space bar, I'll now be in the full screen mode of this uh, particular view. If I want to get out of here, Click the spacebar again and hover over whatever view I'd like to go. In this case, I'm going to go back to perspective view. I would click the spacebar and I'd be back in my main view here. Um, you can also do that on the side here. They're represented by uh, these icons here. So you can have the side by side view. You can have four views and you can go back to the full view here if you'd like. In here, in these menus you will find tools for the mesh that you created and every single one of these uh, abilities here these tools will have a little box on the side and this is 
just some extra settings that you can adjust depending on which tool that you are using. Um, so let's mess around with this mesh a little bit more. You can actually type in the values here. So I'll say I want to go back to the original settings. I'll just put 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0. And it'll give me a cube exactly like the one that I created. If you go into the attribute editor here, you'll notice that you can adjust your mesh from inside here as well. Um, polycube, you can adjust the subdivisions here if you'd like. Instead of manually doing it with the tool, you can kind of you know, generate them here if you'd like. Um, and then some of the more basic stuff that I should have probably covered earlier is the navigation tools here. If you hold Alt, left click, that is how you tumble or rotate around the camera view here. If you hold Alt, middle mouse button, that is how you pan and you can you know move around vertically or horizontally if you alt right click you can do something called dolly which is like zoom in it's can be accomplished by the middle mouse button as well but the alt right mouse button is more precise is a more precise way of zooming in so usually if I create a mesh and I'm like all the way out here I'll zoom in real quick with that and then I'll, if I want to get really precise, say I'm really working on some details here or something, I will Alt and right click and do that. Let's say that I'm way off somewhere, you know, somehow I got lost, I don't even know where I'm at, and I'm like, oh my goodness, where's my mesh? If I hit F on my keyboard, it will bring me back to my mesh here. So if you ever get lost, it's happened to me before, and, uh, and you're like, oh my gosh, and you want to quit or something like that, and thinking that it's going to resolve, sometimes it won't, and F will solve your problems there. If you don't like this grid here, you can actually turn it off by coming up here. So within your camera, your viewport here, you actually have some more settings. You can click the grid, and it'll click off and click on. You have some several options here. You can go into wireframe mode here. This will uh, display uh, Tech, uh, yeah, textures or, or default material. So the default material I'm using is just probably a Lambert. Um, if it's textured, I can do that. This is uh, wireframe shaded, so the wireframe will display versus where if I turn that off, it'll just be a cube. But if I want wireframe shaded, then I have that as well. If I have lights, turn those on. Shades, or turn those on. Shading, light, you know, stuff like that. I don't have lights, but if I did have lights, I would do that. And another thing that I like to do um, that you can do is the duplicate. So say you have this cube here and you would like another one. If you control D on your keyboard, you'll notice here in the outliner that another cube has been generated. And I can move this to the side or whatever I needed to do. Uh, if I want to have multiple cubes evenly spaced there for whatever reason, I can click Shift D and it will redo the duplicate that I just did uh, just in case you wanted to have something set up in that way so let's say I'm ready to export my mesh I'm done modeling it and I want to export it for rendering or maybe I want to export it for texturing in different software I will go up to file export selection and then I will be presented with different file types I can export it as Personally, I use FBX, and the most common ones I usually see are FBX, OBJs, or uh, this one right here, the DAE FBX. Um, but for whatever purposes, you know, whatever softwares or different programs you may be using, you might be able to needing for that. But as far as my knowledge, I don't, I don't use those. So I generally just say FBX, and I go to export selection. Uh, I'm going to give my mesh a name, so I'll just box but you know you can name it something uh, appropriate to what your mesh is um, you can adjust these settings here but if honestly if you're just looking for like the default settings um, and you want it to stay the same then I'll just do that and then I'll click export selection and you can see here down here it says the result is that it's saved and that's pretty much it for exporting your files I will say before you export come up to edit 
and delete all by type history that generally uh, will help out especially if you're gonna come back and open the file again or I always delete the history every once in a while because Maya is very notorious for crashing and having all these crazy bugs so just anything you can do to help it I found that that's something that you can do to help it as well that's all I'm really gonna cover in this tutorial I don't want to go too deep as I've said before if you guys liked this video please help support by clicking the like below if you have any more questions which I'm sure you do feel free to comment below and let me know what those are and I'll try to help you guys out as best I can thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next video Thank you.